so now what we are going to do is take up a somewhat more complex example right and work through that as well just to sort of get practice in the idea of how to implement folded architectures right one thing to keep in mind in practice it is very unlikely that you will be manually doing this kind of folding you are not going to individually decide what is going to go into each step but the point of this course is for you to understand the principles involved what does it mean to have different operations scheduled at different time steps right and when a tool or a compiler says that it is putting different operations in different time steps or different control steps what is the implication what does it mean how is it going to do it okay how does if you were to do it by hand how could you actually build such a system that knowledge is the important part okay so the ex larger example that we are going to take is something called a biquad filter structure right this is a somewhat common occurrence in signal processing it is essentially a second order filter structure it has both fir and uh, iir portions right and it has a number of useful mathematical properties primarily from the point of view of the implementation it turns out that this is a fairly robust and stable to a lot of different noise effects okay so it's very popular in practice it is used a lot it turn uh, uh, but as far as we are concerned it just we are using it as a slightly more complex example of a signal processing system that needs to be implemented so what i'm going to draw is a data flow graph corresponding to one particular realization of this filter we'll look at all the different operations that need to be implemented then say if i have a finite set of resources how do i go about folding everything onto this and getting it working okay so the biquad filter itself looks like this so what you can see over here is there are four addition operations and four multiplications okay the structure itself overall you can sort of see what is happening out here right it has these two feedback loops right but the rest of it is essentially going in a feed forward manner right so like i said there are both fir as well as iir components to this structure right it's essentially a second order structure because up to y of n minus 2 and x of n minus 2 are being used in the computations that we have over here okay now later on we will actually see what the original structure looks like this is already a structure that has been slightly retimed and pipelined to make it possible to do a scheduling right the original structure actually looks a bit cleaner than this but it doesn't matter as far as we are concerned we are just going to use this as our starting point okay so what i am going to do now is to basically associate labels with each of these operations but more importantly what i'm going to do is define something called a folding set okay in order to understand a folding set it might be easier if we just go back to our original examples what i'm going to say over here is if i do this right that is t of a1 equal to 0 t of a2 equal to 1 i can also equivalently write that by saying that there is a folding set which has the elements a1 and a2 this is the folding set for the adder okay the meaning of this notation is basically that the adder has two phases in which it can operate and because i have given this a1 comma a2 it means that a1 is going to execute in time in phase 0 and a2 is going to execute in phase 1 okay even though i am using curly brackets it is not uh, an ordered set i actually the order is important over here a1 followed by a2 so 
in the next example in this one over here effectively what this corresponds to is the folding set is S equal to A1 what happens in the time instant 1 nothing so I will just put a null over there right use the symbol phi to indicate a null element and A2 right either a null or just a dash essentially to indicate that no operation is happening over there okay. And similarly for this third example what I would have is this corresponds to S is equal to A2 at time 0, A1 at time 1 and nothing at time 2. And using the same notation what I end up with is further and before I give that notation I am going to make the assumption that the adder is pipelined to depth 1, multiplier pipelined to depth right this is what we discussed yesterday I am just repeating the same assumptions that we had uh, yesterday. All that this means is like I said yesterday the multiplier I can give it inputs on every clock cycle but it has a latency of 2 cycles so the output becomes ready only after 2 cycles. Another way of writing it is P m is equal to 2 in this case okay in terms of the notation that we were talking about earlier the P m for the multiplier is equal to 2 okay. We will see how that applies when we are basically doing the DF computations. So now with this information in place I am going to write down S1 which is for the adder right I am going to assume I have one adder and one multiplier right and before I can write S I also need to know what value of n to use what is the what is the suitable value of n how many phases do I need 4 why 4 because there are 4 adders. So, with one piece of hardware I could do it in 4 clock cycles. How exactly I do not know yet, but that is the bare minimum that much I can be sure of. Similarly, 4 multiplication operations I can finish those within 4 clock cycles, 4 phases. So, I will start off with the assumption that n is equal to 4. If it turns out that it is not going to work I will probably have to change it and use a larger value of n. With that choice n is equal to 4 what I have is I have the ability to schedule 4 different units across 4 phases of time okay. I am going to call the operations themselves as I will just label all of them. This is A1, A2, A3, A4, M1, M2, M3, M4 okay. So, the set S1 for the adder I am just going to give you this information right is basically going to be A2, A3, A1 and A4. In other words another way of writing this would be to say that A1 is scheduled at time 2, A2 is scheduled at time 0, A3 is scheduled at time 1 and A4 is scheduled at time 3 okay. So, both the notations that I have given here where I put that bar and I put a number after it as well as this set notation that I have or the list notation that I have given over here both are conveying the same information okay. S2 which is for the multiplier M1 then uh, M4, M2 and then M3 okay which is equivalent to saying M1 happens at time 0, M2 happens at time 2, M3 happens at time 3 and M4 happens at time 1 okay. How did I come up with this ordering? we will get to that later 
okay that essentially is the problem in that ultimately is the most interesting problem in this entire thing right how do i come up with a valid set of these assignments so that none of the constraints are violated and at the same time i am able to execute all my operations with a limited amount of hardware in this case with one adder and one multiplier right so if i wanted to systematically take any data flow graph and implement it on a limited amount of hardware effectively this is what needs to be done i need to somehow come up with these assignments how we come up with the assignments is the topic of scheduling okay we'll get to that next after we have completed this the purpose of doing this exercise is to say okay once i have a schedule how do i at least this is one way by which i can implement it in hardware 